Debbie Downer. Yeah, very serious situation. Bunch here. Yeah. Uh oh, I'll come the microphones. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. 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 Hey. All right, Dylan, start with Paul. Uh oh. <laughs> why, why, why are you starting there? He's one of our favorite characters. Is we're he? all fantastic, oh. but he's the one where we get so many questions from the fans about. Everyone's like, "Is he gonna be good? Is he gonna be bad?" I know. Okay, so tell us all the deep secrets now. Tell us what we need to hear. All the deep secrets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Paul's always where teetering he's on going. the fence, right? You, you never know what Paul's gonna do. You never know where his true intentions are. I'm glad that we actually saw. Uh, his true intentions at the end of the season where, you know, he was playing double agent the whole mm -hmm. time and then he was involved in the caster project. So, you know, he wasn't a total douchebag for the entire, uh, entire season. Because I shot that Felix scene when I, when I had to frame Felix back and forth. I was like, oh my God, people are going to hate me. This is going to be the no. worst. But no, no, he comes back and he redeems himself at the end by helping Sarah out. So, yeah. And that's about as deep as I can get with Paul because he is a man of mystery. He always will be. Well, speaking of Paul and Sarah... Yes. Uh, are they gonna? Are there gonna be any more scenes with them together? I would think so. I mean, you always, if you like a couple, you always try to drive a wedge between them. And I think the introduction of the Cal character really did that. But I think, you know, I think Paul, you know, he harbors, he harbors some, uh, you know, he harbors some guilt over what happened to Bess. So I think he he sees redemption in Sarah, and he always has. And I think he really has true feelings for her. So I, I mean, I could be in game. You never know. Uh, not with eight eye patch Rachel. I don't. I don't think he wants any of that anymore. I, th I think that one encounter was enough for him. So. Oh my God, that was that was insane. I had popcorn in my scene. teeth. I had popcorn. I had a kernel back there. She was getting it out for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, see, I was confused. <laughs> now you know. Yeah. Now I thought know. she was just helping the floss <laughs> with her tongue. <laughs> so, being that this 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 world that you guys are in is really bizarre and. <laughs> how do you prepare? How do you how do you prepare for, for everything that's going on? How do you you know what do you do to make it so that you can feel exactly what's I think we're pretty lucky with the writing that it, it, it's pretty well uh, clear for us what what our jobs are that we have to do. So it's it's never a stretch, even though it might be a stretch when you're watching like how the hell is that happening? Uh, the, 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 they're pretty great at yeah. just laying it out for us and, and making it very easy and simple. And John and Graham, the creators, are very accessible. They're always on set. They're always dealing with our questions. I always have lots of questions for them. And even the writers, like, the writing room is amazing. Yeah. And you can always just pop your head in and ask a couple questions or there's always people out there helping you. It's right. Great. And as crazy as Orphan Black is, it's not in that realm of sci-fi where it's like it's there's aliens and spaceships and stuff yeah. like that. It's scientific reality. So as an actor, you know, you can really believe that this stuff can actually happen. And if it's not, it maybe happening already. <laughs> yeah. So I mean it makes it a little easier to believe what you're doing and what you're playing. And to that point I have a question for Christian. <laughs> One of the things I like about the show is that it is sci-fi, but it's grounded in real relationships. Right, yeah. And the relationship with Donnie and Allison feels like a real marriage. <laughs> and I was wondering um, how you two, if you do anything behind the scenes to get that we dynamic. We do, so all the time. I mean, we, we didn't know each other at all. The first time I met Tap was... Um, in episode three of season one when I first come in just for like a really brief conversation and then we sort of as Donnie's part grew we grew together as, as two actors working and building this relationship like Tag and I in real life like when we get together we are such goofballs we're absolutely ridiculous and we spent a lot of time just being goofballs back like behind the, behind the cameras and that kind of builds a really strong friendship that feels older than it actually is and I think that kind of helps to feed the the sense of marriage and the time that those two characters have been together. Yeah, but we, we do a lot of dancing. Like if it's one in the morning or two in the morning and we're still filming and we're going like a little bit crazy, like in the garage scenes oh, the with garage. Leaky's body, it's such a, like, a couple days of being in that garage covered in dirt, super tired, super long days, and we were just getting bonkers. So we actually stole TJ Scott, who was the director of episode nine, we stole his, his remote speaker, his Bluetooth speaker, and we started playing music and having dance parties just to like keep going <laughs> so that we can be energized to bury that damn body. But yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you.